Hello Flight Simmers and welcome to Alpha Hotel Quick Looks. This will be a series of short videos covering a number of different topics in Flight Simulator that can be covered with shorter videos. In this video, we'll take a quick look at how to use a Horizontal Situation Indicator, or HSI. So what is an HSI? An HSI, or Horizontal Situation Indicator, is a flight instrument that combines the functions of a traditional heading indicator and VOR or NAV radio display. The thought behind its design was to create an instrument that put the navigation information centrally in a pilot's instrument scan, rather than in the periphery as is common with a traditional VOR display. The instrument also gives the pilot a more complete picture of the aircraft's position than do traditional instruments and nav displays. As you move into more advanced aircraft with more advanced avionics, HSIs become the standard heading and nav instrument installed. Traditional mechanical HSIs are often found in high-performance piston engine aircraft, though in Flight Simulator you can only find them in add-on aircraft such as the Piper Seminole and Aztec and the Mooney Ovation by Carinado. Almost all electric flight instrument systems or EFIS systems feature an HSI. You'll see these in any of the aircraft that have Garmin EFIS systems, such as the G1000, and we'll also see them in jet aircraft, from corporate jets all the way up to the airliners. Since the HSI is presented electronically on these systems, there are often options to change how it is displayed, such as displaying it in an arc instead of a traditional compass rose format, as well as added features such as bearing pointers for VORs and NDBs. Before we dive too deep into this video, I do want to mention that this video assumes that you have a basic understanding of how to navigate using VORs. If you're not familiar with VOR navigation, I recommend you check out the video on VOR navigation on this channel prior to watching this video. I'll leave a link to that video in this video's description. So let's take a look at the components of an HSI, and then we'll take a look at a few in-flight examples of how to use it. The compass rose ring on the instrument works like a normal heading indicator, with the top indicating the aircraft's magnetic heading. The big difference on an HSI is that the heading indicator is slaved to the aircraft's magnetic compass, or the equivalent if you're using an electronic instrument, so it automatically displays magnetic heading and doesn't drift off the correct indication and need to be reset to the magnetic compass like the old-fashioned heading indicator does. Most HSIs have what's called a lubber line at the top of the instrument to make it easier to see what your current heading is, though on EFIS instruments it usually looks more like an arrow than a line. Most HSIs also have stationary markings at 45 degrees left and right of the nose and tail, and sometimes on the wings and tail, to help with things like pattern headings, instrument procedure turns, and reciprocals. The arrow in the center of the instrument is used to display the nav course of choice. In all aircraft, it can display VOR or ILS data, and in most aircraft and flight simulator, it can be switched to display GPS course information. Mechanical instruments will usually display whatever you have on NAV1 or the GPS, while you can usually select from several NAV sources on an EFIS system. In the center of the arrow is a portion that moves. This is your course deviation indicator, or CDI, and moves left or right to show your position relative to the selected course. The to from indicator is located near the CDI scale on mechanical instruments. On EFIS instruments, it's typically on the shaft of the needle in rose mode and at the bottom in arc mode. It is a to indication when pointed towards the needle's head and a from indication when pointed away. On mechanical instruments, the needle can be rotated with the Omni bearing selector located on the bottom left-hand side of the instrument to select a desired VOR radial or course. The course select for EFIS systems can be located in different locations depending on the system you're using. On the G1000, it's the small triangular knob located on the right side of the primary flight display. Note that on many EFIS instruments, the course will be automatically selected for you when using a GPS course or when you have an ILS or localizer frequency dialed into the NAV radio. 
Just like a traditional VOR, you want to dial in the chorus of the radial if flying away from the station and the reciprocal chorus if flying inbound to the station. As a general rule of thumb, you want the chorus arrow at the top of the instrument unless you're flying a localizer back chorus, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But one of the nice features of an HSI is that unlike a traditional VOR, you won't get reverse sensing if you accidentally set it up backwards. The dots are the CDI scale and show how far left or right of course you are. Various different instruments have different displays, but if you have five dots on each side of the course, each dot is two degrees off course, with full scale deflection being 10 degrees, just like on a VOR. You'll also notice that the CDI scale rotates as you rotate the OBS knob on both the mechanical and electronic instruments. On mechanical instruments, there is a glide slope indicator and scale on one or both sides of the instrument for flying an ILS glide slope. On EFIS systems, this is usually located near the attitude indicator rather than the HSI, and it typically only displays when you're receiving an ILS. On the mechanical systems, there's usually a nav flag to let you know when you're not receiving a good signal for your selected course. When this flag displays, the CDI needle will center. EFIS systems vary in what is displayed when you're not receiving a nav signal depending on the system you're using, but usually the CDI portion of the arrow will be removed. Most aircraft equipped with HSIs are also equipped with autopilot, so most of those HSIs also have a heading bug for autopilot heading control. There's usually a knob uh, to move this heading bug on the bottom right of most mechanical instruments and the control for the heading bug is located with the autopilot controls on most EFIS systems. Mechanical HSIs also feature a heading or off flag to let you know when they're inoperative or not powered. EFIS HSIs usually have some sort of warning symbol like a red X when the instrument is inoperative or getting a bad data, but you can't make them fail like that in Flight Sim Simulator. Uh, in fact, the only failure you can give uh, an EFIS HSI in Flight Simulator is to completely depower all the avionics. So now that we've taken a look at the components of an HSI, let's take a look at how to use one in flight. All right, so just like a, a normal VOR, the most basic function with an HSI is to go directly to a VOR, go directly to the station. Uh, so we're about eight miles south of the Pine Bluff VOR here, uh, traveling northbound. And so I have Pine Bluff tuned up into the uh, number one nav, and that's what's displaying on the HSI. And all I need to do here is uh, turn my course so that the needle centers. I got a two indication already. So I'll go ahead and turn that until the needle centers up. And it looks like about a 03 or a 359 course will take me directly uh, to the VOR. And the nice thing about an HSI is all I have to do is uh, keep my heading and my course arrow pretty much lined up, uh, plus or minus any wind correction, and that will take me uh, to the station. So what we'll do here is we'll track up to the uh, Pine Bluff VOR and we'll take a look at what station passage looks like on an HSI. And then we're going to turn uh, to the northeast and we're going to join up with the 068 degree radial out from pound, outbound from Pine Bluff, which is Victor 16 heading over towards Helena, Arkansas. And we'll take a look at what uh, intercepting an airway looks like on an HSI. Just like with a normal VOR display, the CDI will become more sensitive as you approach the station. And just like with a normal VOR display, you don't want to make large changes and chase the needle when it gets like this. The to from flag will disappear when you pass over the station, and on an EFIS system, the CDI will also disappear. Once you're on the other side of the station, the CDI will come back and the flag will flip to the tail, indicating a from indication. So there's the uh, oops, yeah, there's this, the the uh, flags disappeared. So there's the cone of confusion. Now it's gone to the tail. So I'm going to go ahead and turn to my heading for my outbound radial. So 068 there. Then I'll go ahead and turn the course over to that 068 heading as well, and we'll see what it looks like for intercepting that course. So there is the 068 degree radial uh, dialed in there. So I'll put about probably about a 10 degree or a 5 to 10 degree intercept in there at first and then you can see it gives us a much better uh, sight picture of what our position is we can tell that we're north of it 
that we need to turn down to the south, uh, southeast to intercept the radial, and we'll just put in that correction, and just like on a normal VOR, uh, just be patient with it, and eventually it will come back in. There we can see the needle is uh, coming off the side of the uh, CDI there. And so once it centers up, then we'll turn back to our uh, 068 uh, heading. Or you could, of course, if you've got an autopilot, we'll do nav tracking. Just put it in uh, nav tracking mode, and it'll track that VOR for you. And we can see our course arrow is dialed into the 068. We have the from flag uh, showing this that we're tracking outbound on the radial. And then we can see that the radial is starting to center up here. So this is what it should look like when you're tracking outbound on a radial. And once that needle is pretty well centered up, we can go ahead and turn back to our uh, course that will track it, so about a 068. And again, we've got a nav tracking feature on the G1000, so we can just engage uh, the nav tracking, and it shows us it's actually now tracking the VOR for us, so it will keep the needle in the center. But this is what it should look like when you're tracking outbound on a radial. Uh, so we've got the 068 radial dialed in, our course arrow is pointing on the course that we're flying. The from arrow is behind us, telling the VOR is behind us, and we've got the uh, CDI centered up on the airplane symbol that tells us that we're on course. Okay, so we've reached the halfway point on the airway now, so we want to switch over to tracking inbound on the Marvel 252 degree radial. Uh, so I will go ahead and dial in 109.6, and I will uh, put that in there in the active frequency. And to track inbound on a radial, again, we want to track the reciprocal course, so the reciprocal of 252 is going to be 072. So I will spin the OBS over to 072. And you see we're pretty well on that there. We've got a two from or a two flag there uh, pointing towards the arrow, so that shows us that we're heading to the station. And the needle is centered up, and so that's what it's going to look like when you're tracking inbound on a radial uh, to a VOR. And at the time, we can go ahead and hook up nav if you want to to track the VOR, and it will track it all the way to the station. One more thing we'll show on an electronic uh, HSI is that we can uh, put in a different nav fix, you know, or a different uh, nav source. You notice we have VOR1 up there now. We can dial in VOR2. It's got a different uh, look to it. It's got a hollow needle instead of a solid one. And then here's what the GPS needle looks like there in there. So I have a, a direct course to Marvell VOR in there. And you notice it's put in the course of 073 uh, automatically. I did not put that in there. And if I spin the OBS, nothing happens. So it's going to put that course in there automatically. And I can send it direct to somewhere else, say, if I want to go back to Pine Bluff. So there's Pine Bluff. I hit Enter, Activate. And you see the needle flips back around behind me since Pine Bluff is behind me. Uh, so it will do that automatically for you on an, electric, or an electronic uh, HSI. All right, so let's take a look at uh, how to set up for an ILS approach uh, using an HSI. Uh, we are tracking inbound on the localizer to runway 9 right in uh, Melbourne, Florida, uh, KMLB or MLB. And uh, we are in Carinado's Mooney Ovation or Mooney 20. Uh, so that's how we have this mechanical uh, HSI, and I'm going to show you this using this mechanical one rather than the electric one because the electric one will automatically set the course for you whenever you dial up the ILS frequency, whereas with the mechanical one we can actually change the course. Uh, so let's take a look at how to set that up. Uh, all you want to do is set the head of the needle or the OBS course to the course of the localizer, the front course. Uh, so in the case of the localizer here in Melbourne that's a 094 degree heading or degree course and uh, you want to do that more for your picture than for anything else uh, you can turn the needle left and right on a localizer and it's not going to change what the needle depicts and with the autopilot flying it it's not even going to change what it flies uh, but if you set it up like this, uh, you can put your lever line right on the top of the head of the needle to keep this, the uh, CDI centered in a no-win condition, and then just make small corrections left of right, left or right of that, and it makes flying an ILS uh, very easy. Uh, so this is how that should look for setting up a course. And again, you can turn it, you, you can turn it off, and it's not going to affect how the needle depicts things, but it's going to make your picture look a little funny and little make it look a little different, uh, more difficult to fly. Uh, if it's set off to the side like this, uh, 
then you know you're going to have time a tough time getting keeping it in the center when it's uh, off to the side like that. The one thing that you don't want to do is turn the needle to the tail, uh, turn the head of the arrow to the tail, uh, because if you do that, you are going to get reverse sensing. So if I turn right off of this localizer now, uh, then the needle will show the, the course going off to the right, even it's even though it's actually going off to the left, and the airplane is going off to the right. So that is, you only want to use this for a localizer back course approach. We can see the uh, glide slope coming down now. So if we have the approach armed, it will go ahead and fly that localizer or fly that uh, glide slope as well. And that's how you fly a uh, ILS using an NHSI. So let's take a look at a localizer back course approach. So to set up for a localizer back course approach, you actually want to dial the needle or the OBS uh, to the uh, front course heading, which would be re the reciprocal of the course that you're going to fly on the back course. Uh, so we are tracking inbound on the localizer back course to runway 27 left. Uh, so uh, the inbound course is 274. The front course, or the inbound course on the regular localizer approach, is 094. Uh, so that's what we dial in here. So in this case, we actually do want the needle on the tail. And if we do it that way, we will get correct sensing even though we're on a back course approach, which is another one of the advantages of an HSI. Uh, so if we set it up like this, we get correct sensing rather than having to fly the needle. We can just fly to the needle like we do on every other approach. And so that works out well for the back course approach. So that's how to set up for a back course approach in the HSI. And this is about the only time that you want the uh, head of the needle pointed towards the tail of the aircraft is when you're flying a back course approach. Uh, the only other exception to that is if you're flying uh, outbound on a localizer as part of like a, de a departure procedure or something like that. In that case, you also want the fr front course dialed in there uh, so that you should get correct sensing when you're doing that as well. So that's a quick look at the basics of using an HSI. I think you'll agree it makes navigation quite a bit easier than traditional VOR displays. As always, if you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.